All right, everyone. Let's go through this chapter three review. Now I'm gonna go through the problems that we're assigned. Number two, Holly has $150 to spend at the shopping mall. That's important. She decides to buy sweaters and pants with her money. Sweaters cost $35 each. Pants cost $20 each. Write an equation to represent this problem situation. Use S to represent the number of sweaters and P to represent the number of pants. Okay, so we know Holly has 150 bucks to spend and we have, what are the two numbers? 35 and 20. We're probably going to add them. S represents the number of sweaters. Sweaters are 35. And P represents pants. Done. There's your equation. B. If Holly buys three sweaters, what is the greatest number of pants she could buy? Show your work and explain your reasoning. So using the formula, three sweaters, so we're going to plug in three for S, and we're going to solve for P. And when we solve for P, that's going to determine the maximum amount of sweater or pants that she can buy. 35 times 3, um, 105. Yeah. Go ahead and subtract 105 to both sides. Uh, that's 45. Divided by 20. So 20 goes into 45 two times, right? And yes, it is a decimal, but we're going to keep it at just two because we know that that's, she doesn't have enough for any more pants, basically, at this point. So we're going to leave it at P equals 2. And what does this answer mean? It means that she can buy, if she buys three sweaters, as stated here, then the maximum amount of pants she can buy is two. And that makes sense because two pants are $40. 40 plus 105 is 145. She'll have $5 left over. Okay? If Holly buys no pants, what is the greatest number of sweaters she can buy? Show your work and explain your reasoning. Okay, so again, we're always going to start with the formula. 150 equals 35S plus 20P. She buys no pants, so that means P equals 0, and that's what we're going to plug in. Hundred and fifty equals thirty five S divided by thirty five to both sides. S equals I actually don't know what this is. Um I'm gonna guess six. Six times three is 18. Nope, already wrong. Five. Five times five is 25. 15, 16, 17. Nope, still wrong. For sure, it's going to be four. 
20, 2, 3 times 4 is 12, 13, 14. 10 bucks left over. So, the max, if she buys no pants, she can buy four sweaters. And have $10 left over to get a Wetzel pretzel and a frozen lemonade. Perfect. Number three. Solve the formula C equals 2 pi R 4 R. Show your work. Okay, this is one of those uh, problems where you're just going to move everything around and just solve for one, one of the variables. In this case, we're going to solve for R. So because this is all multiply, opposite of multiplication is division. We're going to divide by 2 pi to both sides. This will cancel, 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 and you're done. Pretty easy. Four. Write the equation y equals negative one-fourth x plus three in standard form. So let's not forget, standard form is ax plus by equals c. So let's go ahead and move this thing around. I'm going to add one-fourth to both sides. One-fourth x to both sides. And you're going to have 1 over 4 x plus y equals 3. And you're done. Because a, in this case, is right here. b is going to be 1. c is going to be 3. OK? 5. Write the equation 2x plus 3y equals 9 in slope-intercept form. So now we're going to go from this form to y equals mx plus b. Pretty easy. 2x plus 3y equals 9. Again, in this form, y is by itself. So let's get y by itself on our, on our problem. Let's get rid of x. Subtract 2x to both sides. 3y equals negative 2x plus 9. That's getting close to for these to look dissimilar, but we still got to get rid of the 3. So let's divide by 3. What you do to one side, you do it to the other. Do it to the other. Good. Cancel. You're going to get y equals negative two thirds x plus three goes into nine how many times? Three times. And now there we go. Slope intercept form. Okay? Let's move on. Last question. Ooh, this one looks tricky. And of course there's a lot of problems. Harlan owns a vegetable stand. He grows and sells his own vegetables at his stand in the city. He charges 75 cents for each tomato, and each month five lucky passers passerby passersby whatever that means. Oh, people walking by get a free tomato. Harlan always sells more tomatoes than he gives away. Good to know, Harlan. Okay. Let's see, charges 75 cents for per tomato. Each month gives five lucky passerbys a free tomato. Write a linear function to represent the amount of Harlan earns each month. Let X represent the number of tomatoes distributed. All right. So for sure we know each one costs 75 cents. Okay. And from the work that you've done already, the distributive property. X, or let's do T. 
T represents tomatoes, but he gives away five tomatoes. So we're going to do a minus because he gives it away. We're going to do five. And we'll just do F of T. And let's simplify this. And I'm going to write it on this side over. Oh, actually, I could fit it right there. And 0.75 times 5 is 375, I think. Yeah, I think it is. There you go. How much would Harlan earn in a month if he distributed 80 tomatoes to customers? Show your work. So we have our function f of t equals 0.75 t minus 375 he distributes 80 tomatoes so t equals 80 0.75 times 80 is, just gotta do the math, 0, 0, 4, 0, 8 times 8 is 64, 56, 1, 2, 1, 2, 60. So $60. Minus three seventy five equals fifty seven fifty six twenty five. Okay, that's how much money he'll make if he sells eighty tomatoes using the formula that we got in the first question. Okay, in part A. The next month, Harlan decides to also sell cucumbers for 60 cents each. Each month, three lucky passerbyers get a free cucumber. He always sells more cucumbers than he gives away. Write a linear function to represent the amount of money Harlan earns each month from sales, from cucumber sales. Okay, just like before, he's selling cucumbers. Uh, write a linear function, so we got to know what they're asking. X represents the number of cucumbers, so they want X. You know what? Let's do a different color. F of X equals 0 0.60, because that's how much the cucumbers cost times x, and how much does he give away? Three lucky passerbyers, so he gives away three. And we can simplify this by distributing, using the distributive property, 0.60x minus $1.80. There you go. Okay, that's the formula that you get if you follow this 60 cents per giving away three cucumbers, okay? Ooh. Harlan writes a function for the total amount of money he will earn for selling both items. His work is shown below. Is Harlan correct? Why or why not? So, we're going to keep green cucumbers This is, they went here, then they went here. Did we have that number? Yep, we did, right here. All right, so that's cool. Let's check the red. This is what we had. 0.75t minus 375. 
Yep. We're good there. Combine like terms. So 0.75 plus 0.60 is 5, 3, uh, 13, right? 1, 1, 2, 135. And with this is just combining the x terms, okay? X and x. I should have put x right here. Sorry. Yep, that's what they got there. And now let's go ahead and subtract this and this. Minus 375 180. We get 5, 15, 1, that's negative 4, negative 3, no, negative 5. Bam. Too good. <clears throat> Is Harlan correct? Yes, he is correct. Explain why or why not. Oh, that's the harder part, huh? Explaining. I mean, our math explains why he's correct. I'm going to leave that one up to you guys. Okay. All right, everyone. So this is the review. Hopefully you got most of these right. You're going to get an A+. Peace.